Good morning. I think we've been lucky so far with the rain holding out. Hopefully, to continue to do so for the next hour. Uh, Bel Air Community Van is behind me. Let's give them another round of applause. All right, let's get this party started. I'd like to ask you all to please rise, please. Color Guard Post. Please remove your hats and continue standing for the national anthem, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Please note there will be loud gunfire as the national anthem concludes. Please join me in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance and then remain standing for the invocation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. This morning, I'm honored to have with us the chaplain of the American Legion, Hartford Post 39, Mr. Leroy Payton, who will be giving the invocation and benediction. Chaplain Payton is a veteran of the U.S. Air Force and the U.S. Army, having served during Vietnam. Leroy? In the military, we have a saying, we all gave. Some of us gave all. This is why we are here today, to honor those who gave all. I'm sure every one of us know someone who gave all, and we are here today to honor them. I will now say a prayer. Today we honor our veterans, worthy men and women, who gave their best when they were called upon to serve and protect their country. We pray that you will bless them, Lord, for their unselfish service, 
and the continual struggle to preserve our freedoms, our safety, our country's heritage for all of us. Bless them abundantly for the hardships they faced, for the sacrifices they made, for the many different contributions to the American victories, our famous flag they supported. We respect them, we honor them, we're proud of them, and we pray that you will watch over them in a special way and bless them with peace and happiness. In Jesus' name, we humbly pray. Amen. You may be seated and recover. As you see, a POW MIA empty chair is placed here as a physical symbol of the thousands of Americans. PO POWs and MIAs still accounted for from all the wars and conflicts during the United in conflicts involving the United States of America. This is a reminder for all of us to spare no effort to secure the release of any American prisoners from captivity, the repatriation of the remains of those who died bravely in defense of liberty, and a full accounting of those missing. Good morning and welcome to the Town of Bel Air and American Legion's annual Memorial Day ceremony. Decades ago, this ceremony started as a small group in front of the War Memorial adjacent to the police department, and today we continue that tradition for the 39th time. I'd like to extend a special welcome to our Gold Star mothers and Gold Star families in the audience today. Thank you for allowing your sons and daughters and your husbands and wives to have served in our great military. Without their courage and fortitude, along with the others who continue to serve and have served, this country wouldn't be the great country that it is, so thank you. Thank you from all of us. On behalf of the town of Bel Air and American Legion, I'd like to thank the many people and organizations represented here today. As I mentioned before, the wonderful Bel Air community band behind me is overseen by board president and alto saxophone player, U.S. Army Lieutenant Colonel retired Bob Veit, and is under the direction of Mr. Mr. Richard Huff. Uh, U.S. Army Sergeant First Class retired Rob Bowerly will also be playing taps later in the ceremony. Gentlemen. <laughs> Our soloist this year is retired U.S. Air Force Lieutenant Colonel Stephen Herpel. Steve has been involved with various bands around the area since he was a young man and is currently a member of the Knights of Columbus. He's a cantor, choir member, and a member of the Contemporary Ensemble at St. Francis de Sales Catholic Church in Abington. Steve? We also appreciate the men and women of the many organizations represented here today in the audience, as well as those placing the honor wreaths. And thank you to Chuck Moore and the fine men and women of the Bel Air Police Department, handling traffic and security today, and Officer Nick Rhodes, who is also in the Marine Reserves, uh, and as a member of the Hartford County World War II Society, um, is again back this year to help with the ceremony. <laughs> Special thanks to the Color Guard from the American Legion Post 39, who will remain steadfast throughout the ceremony. Thank you and a big Marine oorah to the Corporal Pete Arnold Detachment 1198 of the Marine Corps League for the rifle team again this year. Uh, <laughs> And I would say funny, but I have actually more to add to this. Restrooms are on your left around the corner of the stage on the back here. Um, our guest speaker uh, uh, sends his uh, regrets. He is running late, but we're going to squeeze him in whenever he shows up. So we're going we're gonna to drive on. Uh, in anticipation of the rain coming any minute, we're going to try to speed this up for your sake. Um, and uh, we'll see what happens. So I'm going to move on from the guest speaker. And uh, we're actually going to uh, move to the um, service branch hymns. The band will play the service branch hymns at, for each of the military. And when you hear your hymn announced or recognize the music, 
we'd like to ask our veterans and current service members to stand and be recognized. And first up will be the Army.
At this time, we'll begin the wreath laying ceremony. And uh, in the interest of the rain holding out, we're going to uh, still maintain dignity, but try to speed it up a little bit this year. We've already uh, informed the wreath layers, so uh, hopefully we don't go too fast for them. Okay, our first wreath to be laid is the poppy wreath by the American Legion Auxiliary Unit 39. The Remembrance Poppy is an artificial flower that has been used since 1921 to commemorate military personnel who have died in war and represents a common or field poppy. This poppy was the first flower to grow in the churned up earth of soldiers' graves in Belgium during World War I. Today the poppy is used to commemorate servicemen and women killed in our conflicts, which is why we have chosen the poppy flower as the logo for our ceremony. American Legion Auxiliary Unit 55 from Sergeant Alfred B. Hilton Memorial.
Sons of the American Legion, Squadron 39.
Please rise. And salute. Ready, two. Just checking to see if our guest speakers made it yet. What does it look like? Well, you may be seated. Continue on, no guest speaker yet. All right, please stand for the raising of the flag. <laughs> and salute. Ready, two. Maybe just a few minutes, our guest speaker has arrived. You may be seated. Stand up, sit down, Neil. Stand up, sit down, Neil. All right, while he's making his way to the stage, let me go ahead and introduce him. Our guest speaker today is Colonel Philip Munwile. Hope I got that right. He's the current garrison commander at Aberdeen Proving Ground. He's a native of Glendale, California, and commissioned as a second lieutenant in 2000 as a distinguished military graduate from the Reserve Officer Training Corps at Santa Clara University. 
Colonel Munwell's first assignment was to Joint Base Lewis McCord, where he served as a battalion chemical officer, reconnaissance platoon leader, and then as the aide de camp to Brigadier General Carter Ham, the deputy commander of operations for America's First Corps. With a deployment to Iraq as part of op Operation Iraqi Freedom, Colonel Munwell, Munwell or Munwell? Munwell, you got it. Munwell, all right. Returned to JBLM after the Captain's Career Course, where he served as a squadron assistant S3 in 3rd Squadron, 2nd Cavalry Regiment, which was later reflagged as 1st Battalion, 38th Infantry Regiment. He deployed again to Iraq as part of the surge in 2007, and then assumed command of Headquarters Company, which he would command through a 15-month deployment, then back at JBLM. Colonel Mundwell's next assignment was to the U.S. Army Recruiting Command, where he commanded the La Mesa Re Recruiting Company in La Mesa, California. After attending the Command and General Staff College, Colonel Mundwell's next operational assignment was to the International Security and Assistance Force, or ISAF, in Afghanistan, where he served as the Chief of Future Plans in the Combined and Joint 35 Section. Colonel Mundwell next served at Schofield Barracks, Hawaii, where he was the Operations Officer and then Executive Officer of 2nd Squadron, 14th Cavalry Regiment, and 2nd Brigade, 25th Infantry Division Headquarters, where he served as the Chief of Training, then as the Deputy Operations Officer. Colonel Munwell commanded 2nd Battalion, 35th Infantry Regiment, CAPTI, and 3rd Infantry Brigade Combat Team, 25th Infantry Division, from June 2018 to July 2020, and he executed a training deployment to Thailand. He holds a Bachelor of Arts degree in Political Science from Santa Clara University and two Masters of Arts degrees in Theater Operations and Strategic Studies from the U.S. Army Command and General Staff Officer College. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce to you our guest speaker, Colonel Philip Munwell. Hey, thank you very much, everybody. Uh, despite the weather, it is so great to see you all out here today. Uh, and I am particularly honored to be amongst this group today. Uh, as that warm introduction very lengthily said, uh, I, I am the Garrison Commander of Aberdeen Proving Ground, and I have the benefits to have a very close association with Harford County. And so before I jump into my prepared remarks, I just want to give uh, a special greeting to any of the members of the county government, uh, any members of the uh, Veterans Association, I know there's a few of you out there, uh, and any members of the, the Aberdeen Proving Ground team that are out here today, thanks for coming out today. Thanks for the association and thanks for the constant support that you give uh, and keep the association with Aberdeen Proving Ground specifically uh, close at a period of inflection uh, where the Army specifically is concerned about our ability to retain and, and enlist um, quality leaders to join our ranks. We have always been able to, or we always feel very fortunate we, that we know we're able to count on the county, uh, Harford County specifically, uh, to be a steadfast partner, so thank you very much. Um, Memorial Day, so again, thanks for the opportunity to talk today. Obviously, we all know that Memorial Day is a day of national recognition to honor the military, men and women who gave their lives in defense of our nation and its values. A little bit on the history that is incredibly fascinating to me is that it was first observed after the Civil War, actually, and initially called Decoration Day, because families gathered to remember their loved ones by decorating their grave sites with flowers or flags. And this tradition continues across America today, even Memorial Day, the soldiers, every Memorial Day, the soldiers down in D.C. from the third, uh, Old Guard, the 3rd Infantry Regiment, place small American flags um, at every grave marker at Arlington National Cemetery and the Soldiers and Airmen's Home National Cemetery. In proclaiming the first decoration day in, 18, in 1868, General John Logan, the National Commander of the Grand Army of the Republic, wrote that we should not only remember those who died in defense of our country, but also renew our pledges to aid and assist those whom have left among us the widows and the orphans. And so as I orient specifically on Gold Star families, today we will continue to honor those left behind who paid a personal price for us and our nation, our Gold Star families. Would all the Gold Star family members in the audience please stand?
To those of you standing, allow me to express my personal appreciation to you on behalf of all of those present today, actually. We're humbled by your sacrifice, inspired by your resilience, and grateful for your continued service to your communities. On a personal note, every engagement that I have with that wonderful community marvels me. They are so resilient, they're so supportive of each other, and in a world where they could have and foster a great deal of resentment, they continue to be supportive of our country and of each other, and so I'm grateful to be a bit amongst you today. A little bit about D-Day. Uh, next month, we're gonna commemorate as the 80th anniversary of D-Day. We'll mark that milestone and gather on, I and mean, as we gather on this Memorial Day, we're again reminded of the true cost of war. On June 6, 1944, as we all know, more than 100,000 Allied troops landed along a 50-mile stretch of heavily fortified French coastline to fight Nazi Germany on the, on the beaches of Normandy. And as troops began heading towards the French coast on that historic day, General Dwight D. Eisenhower pledged that we will accept nothing less than full victory. More than 5,000 ships and 13,000 aircraft supported the D-Day invasion, and by day's end, the Allies gained a foothold on continental Europe. The cost in lives on D-Day was high. More than 9,000 Allied soldiers were killed or wounded, but their sacrifice allowed more than 100,000 soldiers to begin the slow, hard slog across Europe to defeat Adolf Hitler's Third Reich. Twelve soldiers were awarded the Medal of Honor for their heroic deeds during the Normandy invasion, which lasted from the 6th, to the 20th, 6th of June to the 24th of July. And today I'll share stories of two of them uh, who lost their lives as they stormed Omaha Beach. First is First Lieutenant Jamie, Jimmy W. Montfieth, served with the 16th Infantry, 1st Infantry Division, and his citation for the Medal of Honor was for conspicuous gallantry and intrepidity above all beyond the call of duty on June 6, 1944 in France. Lieutenant Monteith landed with the initial assault under heavy enemy gunfire and without regard for his own personal safety, he moved up and down the beach recognizing, reorganizing men for their further assault. He then led an assault over a narrow protective ledge and across flat exposed terrain and to, comparative, to a comparative safety of a cliff. Then retracing across and back and forth across the beach, he moved out to where two tanks were blind and buttoned up under violent enemy artillery and machine gun fire and moved them to safety as well. Completely exposed to the intense fire, First Lieutenant Monteith led those tanks on foot through a minefield into firing positions and then under his direction, several enemy positions were destroyed. He then rejoined his company and led his men to capture an advantageous position on the hill. He ignored his own personal safety and repeatedly crossed two or 300 meters of open territory under heavy fire to strengthen links in his defense chain. And despite his bravery, the enemy succeeded in surrounding the unit and while leading the fight out of the situation, First Lieutenant Monteith was killed by enemy fire. His courage, gallantry, leadership, and sacrifice are worthy of re remembrance and gratitude to this day. The second one I'll, I'll note is technician fifth, fifth grade John J. Pinder Jr., who was in the 16th Infantry, 1st Infantry Division as well, and his citation for the Medal of Honor was for conspicuous gallantry and intrepidity above the, or beyond the call of duty as well. On that same day, technician fifth grade Pinder landed on the coast 100 yards offshore under enemy machine gun and artillery fire, which caused severe casualties along his, to, to his boatload and carrying a vitally important radio, he struggled towards the shore in waist deep water. Only a few feet from his craft, he was hit by enemy fire and was gravely wounded. But he made it to the shore and delivered the radio. Weak from blood loss and in fierce pain, he went into the fire swept surf to salvage communication equipment. He recovered many vital parts and equipment, including another workable radio. And on the third trip, he was hit again, suffering machine gun bullet wounds in his legs. Exposed to heavy fire and growing steadily weaker, he aided in establishing the vital radio communication on the beach. While so engaged, this dauntless soldier was hit for a third time and killed. The indomitable courage and personal bravery of technician fifth grade John J. Pinder Jr. was a magnificent inspiration to the men with whom he served. And these soldiers were only two of the 2,500 soldiers lost at Omaha Beach, and many more were wounded a high price they were willing to pay to defeat the enemy and secure freedom across the globe. 
The soldiers on Normandy beaches embody our army values, loyalty, duty, respect, selfless service, honor, integrity, and personal courage. And well, when Eisenhower gave the go-ahead for Operation Overlord, he said that the eyes of the world are upon you. The hopes and the prayers of liberty-loving people everywhere will be marching with you. And they still are in so many ways. And today, our eyes are upon them as we remember the sacrifices of America's children, siblings, parents, grandparents, and great-grandparents that they made for this country so the freedom we enjoy today because of them. So this Memorial Day, I hope we can remember the common bond we have with the soldiers who have gone before us, who selflessly served our country and paid the ultimate sacrifice. We honor them by participating in a national moment of remembrance, a call for pause at 3 o'clock p.m. local time on Monday Memorial Day to reflect and remember those Americans who died in service to our nation. We can fly our flags at half staff from sunrise until noon, then raise them briskly to the top of the staff after sunset in honor of the nation's battle heroes. We remember what they gave for us and honor them today. Thank you, thank you to all the Hartford County residents who have been serving and continue to serve and, and honor the, the um, remembrance of those that I read today. Thanks again for your presence today. Enjoy your Memorial Day. I hope you enjoy it because those earned it won it for us. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you very much. Thank you, Colonel. All right, we're gonna move on uh, to the uh, closing part of the ceremony. Uh, I'd like to ask our soloist, uh, Steve Herpel, to come on up. We're going to, he's gonna sing America the Beautiful and, and uh, God Bless America, and you are more than welcome to join in.
All right, Leroy, uh, Leroy Payton, uh, Chaplain Payton is now going to give the benediction. Let's uncover, please. Heavenly Father, we thank you for a wonderful day, a blessed tribulation to our men and women who fought. I pray, Father, that you take care of them until we get home to see them. In Jesus' name, amen. Please rise. You yeah, are still rising. Okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> All right. Commander, retire the colors of our country. And salute. Ready, two. You may be seated if you would like, otherwise I'm gonna to try to make this uh, as quick as possible. You can just stay standing and leave from wherever you're at. Uh, so this concludes the 39th Annual Memorial Day Ceremony. Thanks for coming out. Uh, rain held off as long as it could, but I guess it just couldn't hold off long enough. Uh, just remember that Memorial Day is not just about picnics and parades, although there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, but uh, as Colonel Munwell said, the Memorial Day is about gratitude and remembrance. It's about honoring the men and women who made it possible for us to gather here today in peace. But the reason that there is a Memorial Day, and the reason that we are gathered here, is to remember those who made our way of life possible. Next year is our 40th anniversary for doing this. This is my last year as the host and MC. I've done this for about six years now, and I think it's time to turn over to uh, some fresh eyes and fresh ideas so uh, I would like to thank those of you who are still here for being a part of this over the last five or six years I've enjoyed doing it and I hope to see you out here next year for our 40th which uh, I have been told is uh, going to be the biggest and best yet so uh, God bless you keep you safe and may God bless America <laughs>